Hey, what's up guys? Stephen Cult of Mac here. Now, the Apple Watch Series 3 is the best iteration of Apple's wearable yet. If you've not seen my full review, check out the link in the description down below. But in this video, I'm here to talk about its best new feature, its LTE connectivity. It brings a whole new level of independence from your iPhone, but how does it work? What makes the Apple Watch's LTE connectivity possible is that the new cellular and GPS models now include an eSIM, short for electronic SIM card, along with the UMTS cellular radio, which I'll come back to in a minute. Everyone watching this will be familiar with SIM cards, the miniature integrated circuit that you load into your phone to store international mobile subscriber identity and its associated authentication key. The eSIM is a non-removable virtual version that's 100th of the size of a traditional SIM card. The UMTS cellular radio, which stands for Universal Mobile Telecommunications System, automatically switches to cellular when you're out of range from your iPhone or a known Wi-Fi connection. Although, as we've seen, this doesn't work perfectly at the moment, as it searches for Wi-Fi as a priority. Setting it up is easy through the app, and once it's done, it'll show your iPhone's number, so there's no confusing messaging your mates to give them a secondary number to try. Apple's not the first tech company to use eSIMs for their wearable devices. Samsung used them with its Samsung Gear S2 3G wearable back in 2016, although its adoption by Apple is likely to be the first time a lot of people have come across them. It's an extra charge on your monthly contract, but Apple's been working with carriers to make this affordable. In the US, AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile and Verizon let you marry your watch to your iPhone plan for just an extra $10 a month. Elsewhere in the world, prices vary. For example, here in the UK where I live, it's free for the first six months and then £5 a month after that. Since you share a number, however, you'll have to keep the same carrier as your iPhone. While this does mean you'll be paying a bit more on top of your monthly iPhone carrier charge, the extra functionality is great. For example, just earlier today before filming this video, I popped to a local store without my iPhone, and I was still able to get a call from my friend on my Apple Watch, who needed an answer on something straight away. The call was clear, he could hear me no problem, and the connection was great. The reason that I really wanted the cellular version is for when I go to the gym or go swimming. I always take my iPhone with me and then it's stored in a locker, but it's another device for me to lose or get stolen, so now I can take my Apple Watch and my Wireless Beats X, listen to all the music I want uh, through cellular, and still make calls and texts with no hassle. It's smart technology and it's something we'll see a whole lot more in the future. For example, they could one day make their way into our smartphones, leaving more room internally for bigger batteries and larger camera sensors. The data that's stored on the standard SIM cards could be rewritten for eSIMs in the future. So if you need to switch carriers, rather than getting a new SIM card, it would just be a simple phone call. Well, that is it for this video, but let me know in the comments section down below how much LTE connectivity plays into your decision to buy an Apple Watch Series 3. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, go ahead and hit that like button, and make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with the latest videos from Cult of Mac. I'll catch you in the next one.